What is up guys and in this video I'm going to be talking about how you edit 4K video on any computer with some kind of specifications but I know in this day and age not everyone has the budget to have a $6,000 workstation that can edit 4K videos super smooth so I'm going to show you guys on my laptop and my video editing workstation of how you can use the best of your computer to be able to enable yourself to edit 4k videos without all the headaches and all the pains of scrubbing and crashing and let's get straight into it so the first tip when it comes to editing 4k especially if you have a really slow computer that doesn't have a lot of processing power is understanding how to use the proxy setting in adobe premiere and essentially what proxies are is you're creating smaller resolution clips within your timeline to replace instead of the 4K while you're editing. And then what Adobe will do once you have an proxy attached to that is that once it'll render, then it will replace all the smaller file clips that you originally had with the 4K files. Too long, didn't read, i.e. what you're doing is you're going to be editing the same footage but lower quality so you can scrub through the entire timeline but when it renders you're going to have the full high quality video files and I'm going to show you how to do that in Adobe Premiere right now. Simplicity of this video, I have these two random clips that I've got b-roll from a previous shoot and it is 4K footage if you can see here if I just go to properties. 4K and 24 frames per second filmed on a Sony A6500. And if I try to pay, play back the clip, it's actually not that, it's a little choppy, but it's not that bad. So a couple things that you want to do here. First, you want to understand proxies. And like I already explained, proxies are essentially mini clips that you put in place of the real time clips. So you, it allows your computer to actually play back the video footage. So what you do is you go on the clips, you right click it, and there's this proxy here. And for all you Adobe users, I'm using 2018 because that's another bonus tip if you're actually watching, is that 2019 and the newer versions of Adobe Premiere actually crash for me, so I use the older versions. So I go to proxy, create proxies, and you get to a couple of selections that you get to pick. You can go to QuickTime and go to 1024 by 540 Go pro cine form that is the one the lowest quality so you can have faster playback but i like to stick with the h.264 i go like that and you want to pretty much go into your folders and pick out which folder you want these additional files to go to and then you click ok adobe is going to open up media encoder and what it essentially does is that it makes smaller or it makes bigger smaller versions of that file so you need to render these files next what you do is you drag the clips onto your timeline and you want to click this plus button here and you want to drag the proxy button on here and already have it here as you can see toggle proxies that that's when you that's what you want to look for so right now there's no proxy this is essentially still that 4k footage and as you can see my computer can not handle this 4k footage that well but you press on toggle proxies don't worry about these black bars on the side because it will render the actual footage itself but now the proxy the smaller resolution file is attached to this and as you can see it plays back completely fine and you can edit as is and do whatever effects or files that you want and that is how you actually do proxies. The second tip when it comes to editing 4K within your timeline is there's a certain order that you want to be editing your videos. So what I mean by that is you wanna do your rough cuts first and you wanna do any more heavier graphic heavy such as titles, animations, color grading at the very end. And if you're an Adobe Premiere user, things like having adjustment layers, warp stabilization, or a lot of keyframes where you need to do certain text overlay or animations, do those at the very end and the beginning when you do your really rough cuts with your 4K clips in Adobe Premiere is that you can do your rough cuts because the more layers that you add on to it, the more heavier that you're your actually workstation needs to be using that power, meaning more, more lag, more chances of you crashing. So what I do is I like to turn off the adjustment layers or any text and animations 
while I'm scrubbing through the timeline and I'll show you as well in Adobe Premiere. And as well as on that same theme, when you're scrubbing through the timeline, when you're filming 4K and you actually drop, drag and drop that clip into Adobe Premiere, you wanna make sure you have one over eighth of the quality. You never wanna play, especially in your, if you have your really old computer, you wanna make sure you're on the lowest possible quality while you're having your video playback while you're editing. So unfortunately for 1080p, you can only do, I think it's one over four quality, so a quarter of the quality. But if you have a 4K, this is the trick. So if you want to have a new sequence and make sure it's 4K footage, make sure you have a 4K timeline, which then Adobe Premiere allows you to view the file at an eighth of the video quality. So that will help you play back your videos even quicker without having to pause and the computer crashing and re-rendering to just have five seconds playback and I know how frustrating that is. The next tip is make sure you toggle on and off the effects panel toggle that you can actually activate in Adobe Premiere. And what this does is that with a simple click of a button, you can turn off all effects, all color grading temporarily with the press of a button, allowing you to scrub through your timeline. And the very last tip when it comes to editing in Premiere 4K and heavy, like 100 megabits files and video sizes is that you can also use or enable things such as GPU acceleration. What that means is that not only using the your processor, but also with addition of your graphics card, and this comes for all, especially you PC users, if you have an NVIDIA, or if you're using some kind of AMD Radeon graphics card, you can actually use that to your advantage when it comes to processing as well as rendering your files. So all you do is you go into graphics acceleration and you enable, depending if you're a Mac, it's gonna be called OpenCL, and if you're a PC user, it's gonna be CUDA. So you can activate CUDA while you're in the actual time like itself, but you can also do it when you're rendering. So you can activate CUDA while you're rendering. And bonus tip for all you guys is that you can also, what I do is I queue my sequence into the Adobe Media Encoder and I enable CUDA there. And that also saves me lots of time when it comes to rendering as well as processing all my special effects that I added into that video file. So I hope those tips help and essentially all those tips I still use to this day and has saved me, let's say four hours of rendering time and scrubbing and editing condensed down into anywhere from half an hour to two hours of rendering time with 4K heavy news footage. And if you wanna know some secret tips and tricks when it comes to video editing or know when the next video is out, as well as grabbing your free camera guide, because uh, I always get questions like, hey, what's the best lens? It doesn't matter what camera you use. I'm using a Nikon still to this day. Link is in the description. Sign up for my newsletter where I will give you that free camera guide, no strings attached, as well as learning things like what's the next best thing when it comes to video editing. All that, link is in the description. Check that out. My name is Peter. You're watching Broke Visionary Collective where we all start with nothing, but you can always create something. Smash that thumbs up button for more video content to come and I'll see you all in the next one.